Hey guys, so welcome back to another video. Today I thought I would be discussing negotiating pay because I know it's not fun for anybody to go through this, especially if you're somebody who hates confrontation, but it is an important thing to talk about. So hopefully you get some good stuff out of this video. I'm going to be talking about negotiating pay for babysitters and nannies, two very different things. So let's just get right into this. So starting out with babysitters, babysitters typically get paid an hourly wage. So you could be paying your babysitter $5 an hour or $10 an hour or $20 an hour. Just depends where you are and what the ongoing rate is. Where I am, $10 an hour is the ongoing rate um, for, I think, probably most people up here. So, that's babysitters and how they get paid. Now, babysitters, if you're trying to figure out what you should charge, what you need to do is figure out your worth. So, with both being a nanny and babysitter, or really anybody in childcare, you need to charge what you are worth. Well, how do I figure out what I'm worth? Simple. <laughs> well, yeah, no, simple. You take into consideration the qualities that make you a great babysitter or nanny or childcare provider. So, what kind of trainings have you had? What kind of schooling have you had? Um, what kind of experience have you had? All of those little things go into how much you should be paying, how much you should be charging, and, you know, it goes into your negotiation. Another thing is babysitters, even if you are in high school, you should really figure out your expenses. So what I like doing is getting onto Excel and putting categories of my expenses. So my hair products, my products that like I use on my body, like lotions, um, all that kind of stuff. I put it on an Excel sheet and I can see exactly how much I spend. And it's really easy to do. And it's a really great thing that you should be doing just to see how much you are actually spending. So, that's something you should do. I think it's really helpful and it's a real eye opener to see everything like out. Because um, even though you probably don't view yourself as spending a lot of money, actually laying it out might say otherwise. So, that's something to consider, especially when you are negotiating pay. Is what are your expenses? How much are you actually going to need? Some people will accept jobs that pay a certain amount per day. So it could be like $50 a day for babysitting or $40 a day for babysitting. I strongly suggest not doing this because you could be working seven hours a day and only get paid 20 to 40 bucks which is a real ripoff. If you were going to go with an average rate of $10 per hour, that would be $70. And then if you subtract 70 from 40, I don't have a calculator with me, but that would be, I don't know, like, hold up. <laughs> 30 bucks? I don't know, I don't have a calculator to check, to check that. That would be a big portion of money that you would be losing. So I don't accept any jobs that are going to be like, you're only going to get this much per day because that's a really easy way of ripping somebody off. Now, negotiation tactic that you could use is you could figure out that $10 per hour and just say, I charge 70 a day and that way you're not getting ripped off now parents i don't know they might figure that out they might not but that's just a tactic that you could use if you wanted to so you have to keep in mind though babysitters 
you guys as well, but also parents, babysitters are used occasionally. Babysitters are used for when you want a date night or when you want to run errands without your kids. That's when you use a babysitter. A babysitter is not somebody who works full days, okay? I get this all the time on my group on Facebook and I have to like correct people. I'm like, you don't want a babysitter. Like you're literally looking for a nanny. If you want somebody every single weekday for a full day, that is a nanny. And then you have to pay more. So babysitters are for occasions only. Okay, now you can use like a part-time babysitter, but I wouldn't even consider that being like two days a week for just, you know, maybe five or less hours. So, yes, just know babysitters are used occasionally, okay? What you can also use is a range or something on that mind okay let me explain this so a range would be if you're gonna go for x amount of dollars per day then you can figure out your finances first figure out the lowest number you can go figure out a middle number you can go and figure out the highest number you can go and then with the lowest number consider that either your walking point or consider a number lower than that one to be your walking away point. I think I just said walking point, but I meant walking away point. So you could, let's give a range of $50. So my highest range I would go for me personally is $60 and the lowest range I would go is $40. Now I would look at that $40, I would look at the expenses I wrote out and figure out can I actually accept $40 let's say I can okay now I need to make sure I get a walking away point so if the family decides to go lower than that $40 a day I can walk away and not accept that job if that makes sense you don't want to be being paid less than what you are worth okay so that's just some tips for babysitters and now I'm going to be talking about tips for nannies. So for nannies, same thing, charge what you are worth. Figure out your qualifications, figure out what makes you stand out as a child care provider. Have you worked in a daycare with kids? How long have you been working with kids? Um, what are your strengths, weaknesses? All of that stuff. Please consider it, write it down, sit down with yourself, write it out, and please have that included in the pay. So generally up here, and what I'm doing is a weekly salary. So every week you get paid a certain amount, or you could go bi-weekly, depends what the parents want. Whatever works best for you. Some people can't do a bi-weekly rate so they want a weekly rate or vice versa I know so most people get paid every two weeks so that's something to consider as well so the thing is with nannies is you are paying somebody for full-time care one person to take care of your kids full-time generally every weekday from maybe like 8 o'clock in the morning until 5, 5.30 the latest. That is a full day that is more than 40 hours a week, which is considered full time. Because you are doing that, you need to make sure you figure out pay time off, holidays, and terminate pay. That is semi-difficult to say. So, pay time off. Now, I have been told by people up here that they get paid time off because in a like normal job, a, I guess more like a tax paying job, but even nannies can pay taxes, but whatever. In a more normal job, you get paid time off. 
I don't know. I literally haven't had a real job since I was 14, so I'm not really sure. I mean, I've had jobs. I just haven't been there for that long in order to know, so it's up to you. But I'm going to get into something else later that can kind of factor into that pay time off. So then you need to consider holiday pay. Now, I do know this. In a real job, you would get how holidays work is you would get paid if it's like Christmas, which is probably the biggest holiday people um, work and get, you know, off, you know, not work. So holidays with Christmas in a real job, you would get paid Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and the day after Christmas so you get paid those three days for nannies you can figure out what is best what you want what's good for your financial situation what's good for the family's finan financial situation of how to handle holiday pay some people won't pay you until a year of employment so after a year they get a feel of who you are um, you can choose to do that or you don't have to the next thing is terminate pay. So terminating a family basically means letting them go or like being fired um, for whatever reasons. Now those things should be in your contract. So what you are going to terminate because of. Um, I have a section in mind that's specifically what I can terminate for and what they can terminate for. And you can choose to do this with notice or without notice, it's up to you. But either way, if you are going to terminate, you need to still get paid for the days or the day that you had the child or even the hours that you had the child, you know? So this can look a bit different. You can do like your standard weekly salary but if they're there for like two days, then you can do something that's, you know, a certain dollar amount per for that day. I was going to say per that day, but you probably wouldn't, you're terminating care, so it wouldn't be like more than one day. So talk about that. And yeah, it's, it's such a difficult thing. I just had a interview with a nanny family and this is the furthest I've gotten in the process of being a nanny and so this whole pay thing was very difficult to figure out but what else you need to think about is when you negotiate pay pay or you figure out what you should be paid is you have to know that living is not cheap living is expensive AF like let's just get real living's expense is expensive and once you do like an excel sheet and you break down like the hair products you use the body products you use women when you break down period products like that is all expensive and then you add all that stuff up and it's still expensive so I'm very honest with my families that living isn't cheap when you have a nanny, you are literally paying for somebody else's living, okay? Now that person, if they have insurance, that is great. But if they don't have insurance, you're probably going to pay a bit more because medications without insurance is expensive. And oh my goodness, it's the world we live in, you guys. Living is just expensive and families should know this because they also have to pay bills. You know, but I definitely have parents all the time saying, well, I don't want to charge an arm and a leg for childcare. Okay, but that's how that person is making money, you know. So that's just something to note. Again, highly, highly recommend getting an Excel sheet and writing it down every single expense, adding it up, getting the grand total so you can see exactly what you need to survive. In that sheet, whether you are a nanny or babysitter, you also need to put down like medication expenses, gas expenses, um, rent, and all of that kind of stuff if that applies to you. 
So that will help you really figure out your living cost. <laughs> And that is something you can take into consideration. Like I said, I'm very honest with my families of living cost. Um, I just simply say it's not cheap. And for me especially, I have braces. So I have a monthly payment of a crap load of money that is automatically going to get deducted from my pay. So, you know, I have to consider that. So they could be really paying me this amount of money but I'm really getting like this amount of money, you know? So that's a whole thing. Again, with nannies and babysitters, you do not want to get paid less than what you are worth. Charge what you are worth. I received that advice probably like a year or two ago and it has served me well. With nannies, you can also choose ranges and your walkout costs. So let's say you, you've you done the math and 150 is the minimum of what you can afford, what you can basically live off of, 150 a week. Let me rephrase that, a week, not like a day or whatever. If it was a day, that'd be great. But 150 a week is what you can make work for your financial situation. How you would choose your range is go up by $10. So I would go up and do the math of breaking it down. That sounded really weird, but I would go up $10 to 160. I would break down the payments. I would figure out 160 times four because that would be monthly. That gets you your monthly um, pay and then break down any like get that number then break down any monthly payments you have so for me i'd have to take away my braces cost you'd get that number then i would do the exact same thing with 170 170 times four to get the monthly pay and then deduct any like monthly pay that you have monthly expense that you have from that you should also note your Netflix accounts, your Amazon accounts, any subscriptions. Put those into your expense sheets and subtract that from your monthly pay. Then you need to figure out what's the lowest you can go. So 150 I can make work, but I know if it's 140 and I've done that math and it's really low and I can't live off of that, that's too low. And at that point, I would have to walk away if the family's like, okay, well, 140 is the best we can do. Then I would walk away from that. That would be my walking away point. 150, 160, and 170 a week are the numbers that could work for me financially and it gives the family options to see what is best for them in their situation. The next thing is just honesty. Honesty is key in any relationship, any communication. Just be honest with people. I've realized, and this family has been so great to work with, honesty has just been our really good friend we openly talk about everything um and it's just been great something like they said to me that really stuck with me is you know i wrote the contract out of just guidelines or yeah i guess guidelines templates that i saw online and they reminded me that they're not a co-op co uh cooperation a co-op or corporate they're not a cooperation. Is that how you say that word? Oh my God, I'm going into business. Why can't I say that word? Um, you know, they're not a cooperation. So that's something to keep in mind. And, you know, it's valid. But again, you need to be getting paid what you can afford and live off of. Going back to the whole thing of living is not cheap. But one more thing you need to think about with nannies is benefits, so insurance and stuff. Nobody up here, I feel like, really knows how to do taxes or benefits with nannies. So it's not really anything that I've thought about. 
but I think the rule is once you're over 24 in age, you can't be on your parents' insurance plan. Don't quote me. I don't know if that's true. So you do want to talk about insurance and how that's going to be handled. Just like a real job, insurance for full time is normally guaranteed. So you just want to make sure like you propose that for me, if I continue working with this family after a year, I am going to ask about insurance. But I don't know if I'm going to have the kid for that long, to be honest, because I'm still in school. So who knows? So that's just kind of some things to consider to talk about when you negotiate pay. The best tips for negotiating pay is the ranges that I talked about. Pick your ranges of what can work for you. That way the family has an idea well they can see what works for them and they can figure out what works best for them and then have that amount that's going to be your walking away amount um an amount that you're not going to accept that it's not going to work for you and then just walk away um i had somebody ask me you know how do i even talk to them about this and i just said you know it's really simple you don't have to make it that hard you can just say hey, I just need to talk to you about pay right now. What we're doing right now is not working. Um, here are some options. Boom. Um, it's not too hard. You want a very open and honest and truthful relationship with the family. So just keep that in mind. And if you take anything away from this video, please let it be charge what you are worth. Figure out your qualifications and figure out your expenses so you can really get paid what you need to get paid in order to survive. So I hope you like this video. It's a bit longer than my other ones, but we are talking about money. So, you know, um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe down below. I post every single weekend. I post babysitting videos. Or really just childcare videos. I should stop saying babysitting because it's really childcare now. So childcare videos, braces videos, acting videos, anything else I really kind of feel like talking about. I post those every single weekend. And yeah, let me know if you guys, what kind of tricks and tips you have for negotiation. It's a learned process. And you can read a bunch of stuff online about negotiation. And trust me, that helps. But um, it just, it takes practice and a little bit of knowledge. So, and that comes, I think, throughout time. So, anyways, hope you guys like this video. And I will see you guys. <laughs> My clipboard just dropped. I will see you guys later. Bye.